And now it's time to take a look at acids and bases. This topic brought to you by Svante Arrhenius. Arrhenius was a genius. Arrhenius defined acids and bases by their characteristics. For example, acids dissolve in water to give off H plus as the only positive ion in solution. That is the definition of an Arrhenius acid. When you take an acid which contains H plus in it and dissolve it in water, it's going to give off H plus and a negative ion. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, but wait a minute Mr. Rosengarten, you told us that if it's non-metals only, covalently bonded, it's never going to break up into ions because it's not ionic. That's true. I also said there's going to be an exception to this that we're going to get to later in the year. Well guess what? It's later in the year. Acids are extremely polar and it's not hard for water molecules to get in there and pull the hydrogen and negative ion apart. That positive hydrogen then combines with a water molecule to form what's called the hydronium ion, H3O+. Hydronium, it's the H in pH. Here's how it happens. Water, as you know, is made of oxygen, which has two unpaired electrons, that hydrogen can bond to. Now in a covalent bond, each pair of shared electrons is a covalent bond. One from the hydrogen, one from the oxygen, one from the hydrogen, one from the oxygen. But when the H plus one comes off, it's looking for somewhere to bond. And it's already lost its only valence electron. It doesn't have any more. Then it takes a look over here and sees that oxygen's got a couple of unshared pairs they're just sitting around not doing anything. So H plus says to water, hey water, that's some nice unshared pairs of electrons you got there. Mind if I mooch off you? And the water says, nah, just bring your nice positive attitude with you. So the H plus comes along, makes this whole thing charge plus one. This bond right here is called a coordinate covalent bond. It's different from a normal chemical bond it just in how it forms. Remember, a covalent bond is one electron from one atom, one electron from the other atom, they share them. In a coordinate covalent bond, both of the shared electrons come from the same atom, and the other atom is simply mooching off it. That's why I like to call this bond a mooch bond, although it's not terribly technically accurate. Once a coordinate covalent bond forms, it acts just like any other covalent bond. And this H3O plus is what you get when you dissolve an acid into water. Acids have a pH of less than 7. Now what pH is and how you determine it, we'll get to in a different topic. But for now, if a pH is less than 7, you're talking about an acidic solution. And the lower the pH, the stronger the acid. Acids can oxidize active metals to form hydrogen gas and a salt. You see the hydrogen from the acid forms H2 and the other ion combines with the active metal to form the salt. For example, if we were to take zinc and react it with hydrochloric acid, the zinc would take the hydrogen's place, form zinc chloride, and the hydrogen would go off on its own as diatomic hydrogen. How do you know if a metal is active or not? For that, we need reference table J. Reference table J, or the activity series, lists metals from most active to least active. Any metal that's higher than hydrogen is capable of being reacted with an acid. Anything less than hydrogen is less active and therefore will not be able to react with an acid. Now there are acids that can eat away these metals, but for the purposes of this class, we will assume that there are not. So any of these metals up here that are listed above hydrogen are active and can react with the metal. So which metal can react with an acid? Copper, silver, aluminum, or gold? Copper, silver, aluminum, or gold? Aluminum is the only active metal of the bunch. And therefore, aluminum can react with an acid. Dilute solutions of acids taste sour. Sour. That's right. 
That's why Sour Patch Kids have got that sour flavor. They've got citric acid in them. I wouldn't recommend doing this in the lab. Is this an acid? Uh, I don't know. It just burned my tongue off. Don't taste acids. If you taste something sour, it's sour because it's acidic. Acids turn indicators color. Now indicators are chemicals that are color sensitive to certain pHs. Above a certain pH they're one color, below a certain pH they're a different color. We can find them on reference table M. These numbers here and these colors here indicate from the lower value down it's the first color, from the upper value up it's the other color. In between the two values it's an intermediate color. For example, less than 3.2, methyl orange is red. Higher than 4.4, it's yellow. In between these two values, it's orange. What color will bromothymol blue be in a solution with a pH of 2? A pH of 2 is less than the lower range of bromothymol blue's color change. Below 6.0, 2 is below 6.0. Bromothymol blue is yellow, therefore yellow. What color will methyl orange be in a solution with a pH of 1? Methyl orange in a pH of 1, which is less than 3.2, will be red. If the pH had been 8, or above 4.4, it would be yellow.